Meet Sarah. Sarah wants to know how to make films. After taking intro to film and broadcasting, I can help her get started. First of all, you'll need to know a bit about the basics of film. We'll begin by discussing audience manipulation. Good filmmakers can change the way their audience feels by simply using different shots, lighting techniques, music, etc. There are many different types of camera angles, and they all serve different purposes. The main four types of shots include wide shots, medium shots, close-up shots, and extreme close-up shots. High angle, or bird's eye view, shots are usually taken from above the subject and can cause the audience to perceive them as small or weak. Low angle shots are taken from below the subject and can cause the audience to perceive them as intimidating or powerful. Establishing shots are used to set the scene and provide context for viewers. Lighting also plays a critical role in audience manipulation and filmmaking. Three-point lighting is most commonly used for interviews. The first component of three-point lighting is key lighting. Key light is the main light source in a shot. It can be hard or soft. Hard lighting can be softened through diffusion, which is when you put material in front of a light to filter it. Key light can also have fast or slow fall off. Fall off is the distinctness of the line between shadow and light. The faster the fall off, the more distinct the line. Backlight is the second component of three-point lighting, and its purpose is to separate the subject from their background. Fill light, the third component, fills in any additional shadows left over from the key light. The final aspect of manipulation I'm going to touch on is sound and music. Though subtle, it impacts the audience by influencing their emotions without them even realizing it. Effective use of sound and music are some of the best tools a filmmaker can possess. In order to utilize these skills, you'll first need to understand how to actually work a camera. There are three frame rates you typically work with. 60 frames per second is used for fast motion shots. 30 frames per second is the quality of reality TV or home movie type footage. 24 frames per second is the standard frame rate for normal films. It's important to always apply the right frame rate for your video when recording. Format is also important because it controls the quality of your footage. SD, or standard definition, is lower quality than HD, or high definition. Correctly white balancing your shots is very important as well. White balance balances the intensity and distribution of color and light. You can adjust white balance to fit your environment. Without proper white balance, your shots could look dark or discolored. In order to record a video, you'll probably need to think about audio. There are a few different ways you can record audio. The onboard mic is the mic that records directly from the camera itself. Other microphones, such as handhelds, are available that hook up to your camera through the use of an XLR cable. To use this method, settings on the camera must be set correctly and the inputs must be accurately aligned. You can also utilize line levels, which send audio through premix signals when recording. Being able to use a camera is important, but without basic editing skills, you won't be able to actually create your video. The first step is importing footage from your SD card to the computer you hope to edit on. Always import video files in 1080p and save to a folder in the working drive so it's easily accessible. Once imported, open a new project in Adobe Premiere and start importing materials from the working drive. In order to preserve sequence settings, import video files before audio files. You'll be able to see your imported files in the left-hand side of the screen, and from there you can drag clips into your timeline and adjust their length, speed, etc. You may also want to add transitions, effects, and text. The more you play around with the software, the easier it becomes, and the more you're able to do with it. When you're finished editing your video, bring your cursor to the front of the timeline and hit I. Then, bring your cursor to the end of your timeline and hit O. Go to the toolbar at the top and hit File, then Export, Media, and from there, make sure you're exporting in the format H.264 in order to minimize file size. Then name your file, select where you want it to export to, and hit Export. Your video will open in QuickTime once it's finished exporting. These skills apply to most types of filmmaking, but there are a few specific content-related things you need to consider when doing news broadcasting especially. Bias is ever-present, so eliminating bias completely can be difficult. When reporting the news, just try to stay as objective as possible and relay the facts and the facts alone. There you have it, Sarah. With this information, you'll be able to make some awesome videos. To learn more, take the Intro to Film and Broadcasting class at Highlands High School.